live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning Island. We are with Brody Kern, and he has mastered the new psychology of productivity. Waking up wealthy, sign me up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Day. How did you develop this expertise? So I really, I really started this out for and from a point of desperation for myself. I didn't build this. I initially built it for myself. I didn't build it for didn't build it for clients. I had no intention of coaching, teaching it on social media. It was simply because I encountered a point in my life where I was I was building businesses. I was, you know, at a young age, I was making the level of income that I always thought I wanted to make, but I wasn't feeling that fulfillment. I wasn't uh, I was I was overweight. I wasn't spiritual at all. My relationship was suffering. The only thing that was going well in my life was business. And I had to take a step back and really, because I would look online and I would see guys who were more fit than me. They were more spiritual than me. They had better relationships, better fathers. They, and, and they made more money than me. Their businesses were bigger than mine. So I had to, I really said, okay, well, if those guys can do it, then there has to be some sort of path to having it all, to crushing it in every single area. And so I, I went on an 18 month journey of self-realization, really figuring out what worked for me, studying the performance habits of everyone that I could talk to. Every person that I, lived my definition of success, I got in touch with them, interviewed them, figured out what they were doing, and I tested it on myself. And then eventually I had to take it to the marketplace because I learned, I, you know, I found what I thought was the secret, at least for me, to fulfillment and achievement. And now we've been replicating that process for the last 12 months into our coaching clients. I love that. So what yeah. is the secret sauce? So, it, 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 and I love to call it a secret sauce too <laughs> because it, it, it's not that secret. It's not like we, we created anything special. Um, dis discipline was it for me and, and it's consistency because the thing about habits, like we are all trying to, we're looking at our long-term goals and it's great to have big audacious goals and you know big aspirations. But the thing is, you don't get there just by thinking about that. It's about small consistent actions compounding over time and so it is all about structure and accountability for every single person and if you are not someone who can hold yourself accountable it's about creating the conditions that can now what is the number one killer though of this self-mastery so the biggest killer of self-mastery and we all experience it is our own thinking our anxious thoughts our negative thoughts our emotions fear panic um and and life really you know because and we have to stop lying to ourselves like all the time, that is the biggest thing that would stop me. I, I would convince myself we're so good at justifying, you know, the comfortable behavior, right? If you're trying to eat good, we're very, very good at justifying why we can eat out tonight for dinner, why we can eat bad right now and pick it back up tomorrow or pick it back up later today. But if you if you don't have the ability to master that emotion in the moment, it comes down to presence. If you don't have that ability, then you're always going to lose because if you if you can't control that. How, how are you going to handle your business when things get tough? How are you going to handle being a spouse when things get tough, being a father when things get tough? You know, self-mastery is, is the whole play for me. It's the prerequisite to success. I just wow. love that. It's one of the themes that I think um, I cover a lot in my coaching practice, particularly with executives, but also with athletes. It's like the cognitive agility and the emotional regulation that allows you to continue to move forward, yep. but in a way that isn't like super stressful or anxiety provoking, right? Yeah. So what do you recommend people can do to start that process because it feels so overwhelming to most people like ah, I don't want to be outside my comfort zone right so okay so here here's what I recommend and you know it's there's a big cliche about self-awareness right become self-aware but for me it started in meditation meditation at least gave me the ability to stay calm in the moment regardless of what was going on you know so I picture these two like conveyor belts or treadmills going on next to me all the time. One is my anxious and negative thoughts. One are positive and abundant thoughts, right? And if I'm president, or a president, if I'm president. Yeah, that's pretty good that's too, though. Yeah, I, go, I, that's that's how you president. I think that's, I think that's <laughs> how you get there. Um, if I'm president, I have the ability to choose which one I get on, right? But if, if I'm not present, I'm kind of just stepping in each direction, hoping that I'm over here. But most of the time, I'm on the negative one. Mm. And so meditation is great. Meditation, you know, has endless benefits, yeah. right? But presence is the biggest one. It, it, it all comes down to presence for me. And that that's where I started. And then also, I was just talking about this the other day. The second thing that I did is I built a board of advisors. I needed individuals around me who were not afraid to call me on what I was doing, right? They were going to tell me when I was lying to myself, no matter what, for better or for worse, didn't matter if it offended me, didn't matter if it was an e ego shot. Is this friends or these are people that you hired? Friends, mentors, uh, just uh, my friends were hardest on me. Right? Why? People in my life mm -hmm. were hardest on me. And so then I made it a practice of calling them whenever, you know, I I needed something. And I learned this practice. So, you know, I've been, I've been in recovery for years now. And I learned this practice in AA, right? 
whenever I'm stressed, I call my sponsor and he either talks me off the ledge or just tells me that I'm being a victim, right? And I was like, okay, I need other individuals who can do this in other areas of my life. And so I, you know, for more or less, I just found sponsors in different areas of life. And that's been my path. So was it be, would it be for each different thing, like for eating this, for that, this, for that, and you would call them, okay, I'm about to eat a chocolate bar. What do I do? And so not, so <laughs> a, lot of, a, a lot of them have been that way. So right. I'm, very, I'm very big in investing myself, investing in mentors. So, you know, I, like right now I'm training for a 50-mile ultra marathon. So I've got... Uh, wow. Why? Why? Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, a separate, just kidding, that's a separate story. We can get into that. It's good. Oh it's my good. God. But, um, you know, I, I've got someone for my fitness, for my nutrition, and then everything, and then I've got someone for my sobriety, but then everything else that comes down to this idea of self mastery. So, and I've, st I've studied it so much now. I just, my ego is so good at protecting itself. So I just need to be told when I'm being a victim, when yeah. I'm no, like operating out of that victim mindset. That. Because when you take that ownership, when you take ownership, regardless of if you are a victim, right? If you are being victimized, if you take ownership of the situation, it no longer has power over you. Mm. If I take ownership, nobody else can tell me how my life is going to go. And that's super important for me. Wow. So, what kind of services do you offer to your clients? So what we do is we, we only work with male entrepreneurs under 30, right? We have a couple guys who are like between 30 and 35, but special case, we we are very specific with the type of culture that we're building. And, you know, I'm building a culture of guys that I want to be around. But the biggest thing that we do is, is we teach them that. Many of our guys come in and they are doing good. And, you know, we have our core four areas of life. And many of them are doing good in one, maybe two, right? But then they're really struggling in the others. And so the way that I look at it is I look at my financial vehicle like a sailboat. And so before this, you know, this awakening that I had, uh, I, I was fighting to get wind in the sails, move the needle forward from a financial perspective. And it was going okay, right? Good gust of wind, things happen well. But what I didn't realize is I had these three anchors dragging mm -hmm. across the ground. And that's my mind, body, spirit. So we, we call it our MBSB system, mind, body, spirit business. And, uh, you know, until I started focusing on the MBS, those anchors eventually for me became motors. This is how I paint this picture, right? So now not only I'm not d depending on wind, I'm not depending on the market conditions. I'm able to actually steer which direction I want to go, accelerate, slow down when I need to reflect. And many guys, especially young guys, they don't understand the effect that focusing on mind, body, spirit has on their business. They're just so single test focused on that. And you know, it, it's framed as they're making sacrifices, right? I'm gonna focus on my business now and I'll deal with relationships later. I'll work on my body later when I have this wherever I wanna be. Well, that time never comes. You reach it and it's always just, okay, what's next? Like, is this it? And so really bringing it all together is what we teach. Mm. Love wow, that. that's incredible. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you if they want to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. So the best the best place to find me is on Instagram, at Brody Kern. Uh, I'm super responsive. So, you know, if I get a DM two to three days, I I'm back at it. Like, I, I, it, I've built other businesses. I have some other businesses going. This is my passion project. So whenever young individuals are going through what I have gone through, I want to hear about it because I want to, whether they are, my program is a fit for them. If it's not, I'll send them to someone else who is a good fit for them. And that's that's all that I want. So just hit me up on Instagram, follow me there, share some stuff if someone needs to see it. Oh, thank you so much, Jody. Stay tuned. Good morning, Good morning, Lawlands.